You're listening to the Hurdy Gurdy Travel Podcast. I'm your host, Justin Vakula, with how to travel the world at next to no cost through credit card signup bonuses, perks, and rewards. This is episode three, Focus on Signup Bonuses, Not Categories, where I explain why credit card signup bonuses, rather than bonus categories, especially through multiple cards, often provides the most value. When considering a new credit card, I first focus on the signup bonus. In most situations, the sign-up bonus provides the best return on spend when compared to spending on particular categories, which generally provide only a few percent in return on spend. My aim is generally not to place a very high amount of spend on one card or even focus on one card. I'll talk about special exceptions later in the episode. Instead, I think about multiple cards so I can obtain multiple sign-up bonuses to get anywhere from a 15-20% to return on spend, sometimes better, rather than just a few percentage points by using cards I already have. Why get only a 1-5% to return on the same old, same old credit card? Or worse, 0% using cash or debit, when you can get a return of 15-20%. to Consider, if your average monthly credit card spend is $2,000, a yearly spend of $24,000, and you're making the mistake of using a credit card you've had for years only giving you a 1% cashback return, you get a mere $240 at the end of the year. What if you, with a very conservative plan, get one new credit card every three months and gain multiple sign-up bonuses? With a hypothetical combination of the Chase Sapphire Preferred, Chase Inc. Preferred, Chase Inc. Cash, and the Chase Inc. Unlimited cards, you'll get about 265,000 ultimate rewards points, which, if cashed out at a 1% rate, is $2,650. Redeem the points for travel, and you'll easily get more than $4,000 in value for more than a 16% return on spend, or about a 12.5% non-taxable increase in your yearly income if you're making $50,000 per year. And again, this is a very conservative estimate when only considering four cards in one year and just credit card sign-up bonuses. In future episodes, I'll talk about many other ways to gain thousands of dollars in value per year. Neglecting spend towards sign-up bonuses and failing to sign up for multiple new credit cards has significant opportunity costs. It was admittedly a sad moment weeks ago when a man I played poker with happened to be talking about how he puts, quote, all of his expenses on his one American Express Platinum card and gets, quote, one free flight every year. At this point, I'm at 21 different credit cards and charge cards and have gained more than half a million points just from reaching sign-up bonuses. A very conservative value on these points is $5,000 towards travel and so many other benefits, statuses, free meals, shopping credits, happy moments, and much more than I'm not even including in this total, far more than just one flight a year. Even with just one card, the Chase Sapphire Preferred, as I've mentioned in previous episodes, we're getting at least $750 worth of value for travel. I ask the man why he places all of his expenses on just one card. Well, he's getting only one point worth about 1.5 cents per dollar spent, and he says he doesn't want to bother with new cards. He wants to keep it simple. Surely he does so at his peril. I don't want to bother with paying full price. I want to keep travel simple by paying next to nothing. I don't want to settle for just one flight a year, and even worse, pay thousands of dollars out of pocket for travel, or otherwise having to sit at home lamenting, oh, travel is too expensive, I couldn't possibly do that. I don't want to miss out on tremendous rewards and opportunities. I want versatility. I want spending power, freedom, power to travel on my own terms without breaking the bank. I want to maximize my returns, getting a big bang for my buck. Now, let's return to category consideration. Increased returns on categories in most situations really do not move the needle for me. One of my daily driver cards, the American Express Blue Business Plus, provides two times points for every dollar spent up to $50,000 in spend per year, and just one point for every dollar spent after that. Some might think, wow, two points a dollar, I can get 100,000 points per year and only use that card. Well, it's a much better return, funny enough, than just using the platinum card, as was the case in my previous example. But hold on, I got this card for several reasons, not just the two times points. I got 10,000 points as a sign-up bonus, I swapped referral links with a friend for an additional 20,000 points for both of us, and because this card is a great option for me when I'm not working on a sign-up bonus, 
because I have to wait for time to pass before I open other accounts. Please consider using my referral link at hurdygurdytravelpodcast.com. You'll be glad you did. If I made the mistake of, say, signing up for a card offering 5% cash back on gas with no sign-up bonus or a very small one, I'm not coming out ahead very much when considering the Blue Business Plus as a competitor. If I spend a modest $200 a month on gas for one year, I get $120 back when getting 5% cash back. Ooh. If I put all this spending on the Blue Business Plus for some reason, I get $72 back as I value Amex membership reward points at 1.5%. When comparing the Blue Business Plus and a 5% cash back gas card, The difference is only $48 in value in one year. And not only that, the opportunity cost of missing out on another sign-up bonus, a hard inquiry on my credit report, and a possible strike against Chase's 524 rule I mentioned in episode 1. You could have easily made a $1,000 mistake by signing up for the Sam's Club MasterCard early on in your credit card journey. I'm here to help you not make these mistakes. If you're still not convinced about the folly of focusing on categories, You can look for a credit card which offers both a high sign-up bonus, good benefits, and a nice category. Consider the American Express Business Gold Card with a 50,000-point sign-up bonus through using a referral link, which can also grant someone up to 20,000 points and a four-times point bonus on gas and dining. This can, since it's an American Express Business Card, not count against 524. It has a great sign-up bonus, and it gives you the ability to refer others for a 20,000-point bonus. With this card, for example, you have the best of many worlds. I wouldn't suggest this card as your first card, but it's still a solid choice. And now for exceptions. Of course, exceptions. I promised. (laughs) Categories can make a big difference if you're a big spender, someone who can easily reach multiple sign-up bonuses and has multiple cards. I enjoy 5 times Chase Ultimate Rewards points up to $25,000 in spend per year at office supply stores using my Chase Inc. cash card. And even then, I didn't get the card just for its 5 times category. Chase Inc. Cash has a wonderful 50,000 point sign-up bonus, a 0% introductory APR period, which can be leveraged to fund other pursuits, no annual fee, and some other benefits. The American Express Personal Gold Card has 4 times points per year at grocery stores for up to $25,000 in spend, and, once again, a great sign-up bonus and many valuable benefits. Once you have multiple cards and are waiting for time in between opening new accounts, you'll likely run into the dreaded too many recent inquiries and declines if you apply for too many cards in a short amount of time. You can look through your credit card inventory to determine which card you should use to maximize spend. I'll talk more about when to sign up for cards and strategies for avoiding declines or the too many recent inquiries in upcoming episodes. If the year has just started and I'm not working on a sign-up bonus at the moment, I'll use my Chase Inc. cash card at office supply stores since, of my portfolio, it has the highest return on spend. I'll use my Amex personal gold card at grocery stores. I'll use my Amex Hilton Aspire card if I'm at a Hilton hotel. I'll use my Chase Sapphire preferred for travel purchases. If something doesn't fall into a bonus category, I use my Blue Business Plus, since it has the highest return for me on non-bonus spending. It's like a role-playing game in real life, really. I use the proper equipment for the task at hand. I'm in max bonuses. I use the right tool for the right job. That's your level of nerdiness for the day. Embrace it. Put on that plus 5% gold pieces ring at Office Max and Staples. Or Office Depot, if that's close to you. When I'm working toward a sign-up bonus and engaging in spend outside of bonus categories, I use the new card. I don't want to give up bonus category multipliers, and I'm fine to rotate cards, because when I sign up for new cards, and because I have lots and lots of spend to engage in, I know I'll reach the sign-up bonus without overspending or overextending. Start with a careful plan and don't go out buying useless items just to get bonuses. I use the wonderful Evernote app to keep track of my spending and have notes on which card has which category. There's a bit of organization and memorization that's required, but it comes to me quite easily, and I started with just one card and built up. I'm happy to juggle through my equipment to get wonderful returns. Your primary focus when considering credit cards should in most cases, beyond sign-up bonuses. Categories can be a nice boon, but neglecting other factors, and especially limiting yourself to just one card, can cause you to leave thousands of dollars in value on the table. Be smart, be strategic, be a savvy consumer, and most of all, have a great time in your upcoming travel redemptions. 
I'm here to help you on your journey to navigate the credit card scene and experience success. Don't fly solo and don't make mistakes early on in your credit card adventure. Reach out. Thanks for listening and stay tuned for more content. Visit my website at hurdygurdytravelpodcast.com where you can read episode transcripts, complete a free credit card questionnaire to receive tailored recommendations, view helpful resources, listen to past episodes, and contact me. Support my work through Patreon, PayPal, the Cash App, and referral links by visiting the Donate tab on my website. Subscribe on YouTube, like on Facebook, follow on Twitter, and follow on Instagram. Visit my other podcast project at StoicSolutionsPodcast.com, where you can find practical wisdom for everyday life inspired by the ancient philosophers of Greece and Rome. Thanks to generous patrons and fans of this podcast who help support my work. Have a great day. Music